Let's check in with the doc doc, 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 doc. and look at things with a wider wider lens. Pastor Richards on OMG. All right, it's that time of day where, as Mario says, he makes his house gone. So (laughs) cheesy. (laughs) Hello, good morning. Hey, good uh, Daniel. Good morning to you. (laughs) <laughs> Morning, uh, Tom. Mario, Mario, you laughing as if you already got your mm-hmm. uh, pizza lined up. Oh, <laughs> boy. She had to eat it every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I listened. I listened. I think next I had weekend, a little bit weekend. more time. Sure. Shady, <laughs> I, I, Shady, every Friday? <laughs> next Friday. <laughs> next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. We head into back with some Max. Oh, <laughs> The, the whole team or just half? No, 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 Just Shady and I. What, 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 who else? Where? Bing is in isolation. <laughs> Bing is off. I listened this morning. I had a little bit more. I was multitasking, but I heard Bing say that um, he's off pizza. Yeah, he's off that. He, he <laughs> said Max is the best in the world, the best in the Caribbean. Oh, I'm serious. The whole. The Caribbean. Chris come from Trinidad to get Max pizza. All the time. <laughs> I'm used to not anymore with the Mario, 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 <laughs> Mario, Mario, Hurt. Mario, Mario, is into the... Mario gets his special cauliflower. Um, <laughs> yes, man. Knife and fork out and a, a little bottle no, of here. Nothing wrong with that. They expats in, 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 in Bequay, right? Whenever they're leaving to go back to the North American, to Europe, they pack Max Pizzas up and, and travel with them. It they is that good. Them. They, they freeze them or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and take them. It is that good. Max You've never had that? You've never had Max Pizza? Max Telly shares I could... um. <laughs> could uh, <laughs> there again. Oh, nah. Here we go. Oh. All right, next topic. <laughs> 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 you, you, um, uh, oh, a couple of things real quick because this is the end of the week. and um, But... I let me. And you still ain't talk about leadership, huh? Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> um, actually, it's not just leadership; it's actually the dark side of leadership. So it's a rather interesting um, topic. Hmm. Um, I tell you what, um, I have gotten quite a lot of feedback. Being, I mean, and I've been making reference. I think twice this week I made reference to the sermon at KBC um, on Sunday. But um, and the reason why I'm doing that is that. I am hearing it is making the wrongs in the workplace. And up to this morning, people asked me, send the link, send the link. Yesterday evening, a um, couple of people asked me, send the link. We are hearing about it in the workplace. We want to hear this. In case you haven't heard and you um, are just joining us um, on that summer, we talked about um, five things that will happen as this world ends. We talked about the rapture. Oh, by the way, it's just think if you believe in the Bible, these are things that are going to happen. If you don't believe in the Bible, they're neither here or there for you. But uh, because most people, uh, nominally anyway, believe in the Bible, you know, we, you know, you will. We, we talk about the rapture. We said that's going to happen. We said um, the tribulation. I described what the tribulation would look like, what to look for in the period of the tribulation. I said that was going to happen. Also in that sermon, I said um, there's something that is going to be called the mark of the beast and how to look for it and what will happen um, regarding the mark of the beast and stuff. Uh, so I, I kind of clarify that because people were saying, oh, this is the mark of the beast. I said, oh, hold on, hold on. This is what you look for if you really want to know what the mark of the beast. I said who the beast was, who the Antichrist was. Actually, that the Antichrist was going to be alive before all of this goes down before the mark of the beast before the antichrist will be alive so i said all of that um i talked about the false prophet um i, I talked about how the church is going to configure into propagating the message of the um because the church will have a role to play uh, revelation 17 calls it the great whole babylon the great um, so the church will play a role in terms of facilitating the um, one world system, one world government. Um, and uh, mm. so I talked about all of that. The sermon is still available on our webpage, www.kbcsvg. That's one, kbcsvg. No, that's there. kbcsvg.org. It is very um, revealing because it is not based on conspiracy theory and stuff. It's just based on the Bible. And the comforting thing about that sermon 
is that I, I put it together 20 years ago. 20 years ago. So it's not, you know, so it, you can't say that it was driven by things that are happening currently and da 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 And um, it is based on, you know, 20 years ago and um, it, it will blow your mind. And again, I appreciate all those who are asking for the link and all that. I'm hearing from various workplaces. We are discussing it. We are discussing it. And um, I was very, very happy to hear that. The other thing that I would say, not in the sermon, but rather interesting, um, the, the, the role of Israel. And as I listened to commentary this morning, I and yesterday, I think it was, I heard Israel playing um, prominently in the conversation, and I just scratched it. But I wasn't scratching my head, I was just shaking my head and smiling. I'm like, there you go, you're getting it, you're getting it. <laughs> Israel, <laughs> everybody's calling to talk about the Israel example and the Israel phenomenon, the Israel. Of course, they, but see, I said, the Bible said that's going to happen. Israel is going to be an outlier. <laughs> Israel is going to be an outlier. And it's going to um, mess up the works. But let me get, let me tell you what, guys, what's going to happen. Israel will be brought in line. I'm telling you, um, that's what the Bible says. Israel will be brought to play game also. Um, this um, great negotiator um, called the Antichrist, he is actually going to get Israel to cool down. He's going to make the peace with Israel, actually. And... Um, Anyway, it's just I am these. I mean, people talking about these things as if you know they're just like we just finding out about these things. They're going. To have a, I'm like, guys, this thing is right there. If you wanted to find out about it, you could just read it. It's right there. The Bible says it's going to happen, and exactly how the Bible says it's going to play out is playing out. Things are being set up where these the um, global collaboration will take place. Rules and laws and regulations related um, are going to be very, very similar. Mm -hmm. HR rules are going to line up pretty much the same all across the world. Legal maneuvers to execute certain um, things that are basic for um, life around the world and for cohesion will... What's done in America will mirror what's done in Britain will mirror what's done in Australia, will mirror what's done in South Africa. Simple thing, simple, simple thing, you know. And what I said yesterday is that, guys, don't jump up and down, don't jump up and down um, as if you could stop this from happening. It's not going to happen. Yes, being sorry. Someone, was, I was having a conversation with someone off eight just before you came on, and the person was saying to me, exactly what you were just saying, Dave, that back in the days of... Small pox, the small pox, yes, yeah, small pox. People were saying the exact same thing about the small pox vaccine. What? I didn't say anything about the vaccine. I'm not sure what you're talking no, about. No, I know, I know. But all the comments you made about the mark of the beast. I know you didn't say anything about the vaccine. But it just, when you said it, it just came to me and said, wow, somebody just telling me the exact same thing. Actually, yeah, every year uh, Christians talk about these things. They were talk um, so, yeah, even before the smallpox, yes, um, in the 1800s, they were talking about it, in the 1700s, in the 1600s. That's what I'm saying. It's just, it has nothing to do with nothing that happened. It has to do with what the Bible says. So if I talk about it at this particular time in um, August of 2021, and then something has developed in 2026. They will say, you see, back in 2021, he talked about it. This is something that you need to talk about all the time, to keep before the people all the time. I don't know if you follow what I just said there. It is something to say. And it's a progressive thing. I think, thing, I think what I said best during this week, I said um, the Bible puts out world events as um, processes, pieces of a puzzle. And the whole thing, you don't just dump it and they all fall in place one time. Over a process of time, each piece is put in place. Each piece of the puzzle is put in place. And the picture unfolds just exactly the way the Bible says the picture unfolds. Let me show you exactly what I mean, Bing. And listeners, let me show you what exactly what I mean. 2,500, 22,000 years ago, mind you, not 
in, term, in the time of the smallpox or anything. But 2,000 years ago, um, the Bible in Revelation chapter 13 made this prophecy and said, there's going to come a time where you can't buy or sell unless you have this, um, I, basically this mark, something in your hand that you show that you're on board, right? And I, I mean, in my young life, I'm like, how is that going to happen? How does, I'm like, that's never going to happen. You could never get people to succumb to something that says you can't buy, you, you can't do anything without you get this. I was like, that could never happen in my young life growing up. That could never happen. And um, I am beginning to see and think through um, that it could possibly happen. It could, because as pieces are laid in place and uh, collaborative systems and legislations are put in place, what it is, is actually imperceptibly, it is laying a groundwork for this kind of um, pushing your populace to a point where they actually accept this is a, what is what I call, um, being, it's what I call social equilibrium. And I'm going to actually affirm something you said this morning, Bing. Social equilibrium is a equilibrium is a term I borrow from economics, where things are shaky but things settle and then they get to a point of stability. Um, if you are going to be a player in the social world, if you're going to exist, basically, you have a choice to play ball with the systems. Whether it's education, if you want to be educated, you want to travel, you want to eat, you want to, or you could be an outlier and you're like, nah. And invariably, typically, everybody shakes down to an equilibrium where if you want to participate in society, you follow the rules of society. I was actually agreeing with you this morning when you said, okay, this is what's going to happen. Is either you decide that you're going to get on board and play ball or you're out. I mean, you're out. And most people won't want to be out. So I, being I was with you, they're going to play ball. When insurance premiums start to hit the roof, when 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 you can't get education for your children and you are this bad or you are prevented from the most basic things, which including working for your living and protecting and feeding your family, when you are told you can't do that unless you play ball, I'm not talking vaccine, you know, I'm talking mark of the beast. Let me make that clear. I'm talking when the mark of the beast comes, you will be told you can't participate. When the mark of the beast comes, whenever that may be, whether it's in my lifetime or somebody else's lifetime, whenever the mark of the beast comes and you are told you can't buy, sell goods, you can't offer your services, they don't want you, you can't do that. Or when you are told that you can't participate in society unless you are on board, people are going to weigh it and they're going to like, boy, I got to get on board. And people will get on board. Being I agree with you, it's inevitable. But this has nothing to do with this. Wait, wait, let me just finish the sentence. This has nothing to do with vaccine or smallpox. This has something to do with something that was said 2,000 years ago, before SARS, before Zika, before anything. So don't, don't try to measure it in terms of what ha is happening currently, because you could be mistaken. Measure you it. Keep saying, of you keep saying when it comes. How do you know that it didn't come already? I would not have been here. I'll tell you that for sure. How do you know? The Bible actually, um, great question. The Bible actually says, uh, there's a timeline given in the Bible. And because the Bible has been right on everything, I mean, I mean, those who take the time to check out the prophecy and see what the Bible said would happen and when it would happen, the Bible has actually been on point with everything. And there's a timeline. And and the Bible the actually, um, it's given in Daniel, actually, Daniel chapter 9. Um, it, the, the, the Bible, let me make it simple because that might be complex. The Bible says before this happens in the timeline, there will first of all be the rapture. Um, and then after the rapture, uh, these things are going to unfold. Which is why when people say, is this the mark of the beast? I say, no. They ask me, is it actually the mark of the beast? I say, where are you going with that? I mean, like, where are you going with that? The vaccine is not the, the mark of the beast. So, uh, but hold on, hold on. But I said this also. As soon as I said the vaccine is not the mark of the beast, I also point them to the fact that um, things don't happen in one fell swoop. 
processes are developed, pieces are put in place, groundwork laid, things mirror each other to pave the way for what will eventually be. And if if people are careful and look at what's unfolding with the vaccine, um, they would see a kind of thing there, and that's why people are, that's why people are asking with the mark of the beast, because people are actually seeing seeing certain get me listen to my words carefully. People are seeing certain similarities, similarities, right? And because of these similarities, they're like that's what I say. Hold up, no, don't don't be um, don't get too flustered if you see similarities. Because, um, and the similarities could very well be part and parcel of processes that are developing to allow and pave the way for what will eventually come on stream. But the Bible is very, very clear with respect to the timeline. The Bible is very clear that there's going to be a thing called the, well, the Bible doesn't use the word rapture. But this is, the saints are going to be taken out before the Antichrist. Sorry, bingo ahead. According to you again, I know you said it before, but I but I, I, I missed it and I want to recap it in my head. The mark of the beast, the definition is what you can't something that you can't do without. You can't um, I, I usually don't like to put myself out there and say things actually because I could be wrong and as I've often been wrong up to this week, you prove that I was wrong. So I, I try not to do that, but I have a profound um, belief in the Bible being, and this is what it actually says the mark of the beast is. So let me read it, Revelation chapter 13. So don't take my word, I really don't want you to hear me. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, and he causes, this is the beast, the, the small and the great, the rich and the poor. So it doesn't matter, in, in other words, what he's saying, everybody, everybody has to be into this, everybody. Um, even free and slaves, whoever you are, high and low, to be given the mark of the beast on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one, and this is the part that is getting people, this is not me, this is the word, he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell, in other words, engage in commerce, your way of life that way, except, except the one who has the mark so what what that passage was saying that's 2000 years ago across the world all across the world the power of the beast is going to be such that there's you have to collaborate in order to engage in commercial life that i find that as a, an amazing and amazing prophecy who could have seen that i'm and i'm not saying that we are there yet but i could i don't know if anyone can see how this could you know the, the little steps being like it's a puzzle little things will come in place and and people will get used to this idea that we all have to be on board and then eventually now you will get to the point where if you're not on board you can't buy you can't sell you can't travel you can't go to school you shut out we could get there i could see how it could happen doc okay quickly because we're out of time we've gone past the time already and i want to stick to the time okay some words jumped out at me okay and tell me what this sounds like. You buy, sell, commerce, travel, among other words that you said. What does that sound like as a mark of the beast? You can't do these things without the mark of the beast. What does that sound like? I'm not sure. Quite, that sounds like you can't do these things without the mark of the beast. That sounds like if that sounds like. Uh, a, a requirement, a social requirement, um, for, uh, whether it is called social responsibility, responsibility or doing the thing that is more socially responsible or whatever, some kind of requirement that says, guys, we have you, you need this, and if you don't get it, then you can't buy, sell, travel, go to school. That's what it sounds like to me. And what do you need to buy, sell, travel, eat? Become more sweet. Um, bit, Bitcoin, um, credit card, uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> all kind of stuff. What do these things represent? What do these things represent, Doc? <laughs> a medium of exchange. You're talking to somebody who taught economics. That's a medium of exchange, and that is morphing. All the time. What do you need? What do you need to do medium of exchange? Currently, um, our chief um, media room exchange, you know what it is. 
currency. Money, money, doc, money, 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 almighty dollar. Okay. Why can't you say, why don't you say that that is the mark of the beast? Hey, okay, well, if you want to take that position, I am okay with people deciding what they think they want to call it. I am reluctant to call anything the mark of the beast. If you wanted to go jump out and do that, it's up to you. I am not that, like I said earlier, Daniel, I'm sure she's so sharp, she noted it. I said, I am unwilling to put an opinion out there. Mm -hmm. However, I will read what the Bible says and you can make what you want of it. And I tell you what, though, what was rather interesting rather interesting because a, a lot of things that the Bible says um, the sophistry of man and the ingenuity of man they really are able to explain away um, a lot of things that God says this is divine this is God doing it and the intellect of man is absolutely brilliant to explain away and say no this is God what even with the very um, creation you know, people have been able, paleontologists and others have been able to explain away um, the God's act in creation. But they have not been able to explain causality sufficiently. Causality, okay, they say, yeah, there was a big bang. But the, the argument for causality in terms of what caused it or who caused it, that is still, in, in, in even trying to do experiments to replicate it, it cannot be replicated. So what I'm saying to you, Bing, um, is that, of course, I am aware that ingenious arguments and um, for the sake um, of convenience, a lot of ingenious, if you want to dismiss God, and if you want to dismiss the word, the, the authority and the, the exactness of the word, you can, and you can offer alternative arguments in its place. And they're very reasonable. In fact, on one of my programs, I talked about the ability to rationalize and um, to seek to justify it. Logic is a hell of a thing. It's great. Brilliant minds, whether it is botany or, or in zoology or astronomy or whatever, can explain away a lot of the stuff that God says. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's an explanation to find an alternative to what God says. So if people want to find an alternative to what God says, you are welcome to it. I'm not going to fight you. You're welcome to it. I am just saying, uh, which is what I said, Daniel, this is what, I, this is what God says. Mm. And that's good enough. If you have a better explanation, run with it. That's so, all. Mm. Is that good enough? Is it, Bing? <laughs> yes, certainly. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate Daniel and Mary. If you know much, I appreciate the opportunity you've given me um, to come on and say things. It's being, it's being, it's all being, it's all being. It's being. All being. But I tell you though, because I tell you, because people talk a whole lot about what is going on. I have to say this: what's going on? What's going on? Zika, this um, vaccine, and I come on here and not so much try to talk about what's going on, but I try to help us navigate um the hows how do we respond to what how do how what do how do you respond rather than to deal with the what is going on i try to help people to how do you respond to what is going on i try to give you a kind of like a, a roadmap as to how you can possibly respond to what is going on mm -hmm. and you allow that so that i don't have to come on here every day with something new about what's going on something new but how do you respond? And you allow me to talk it through. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Pastor. Okay, bye. All right.